Ooh, looks like Mercedes Benz is doing their next strategy update. This time about their vans business. Isn't the van more a leftover of the truck spin off? I, I mean, it's a completely different business, right? What's the role of vans within the Mercedes Benz group? And how do they fit into the luxury approach of Mercedes Benz cars anyway? Then again, looking at the van's Q1 margins, pretty luxurious. But honestly, does it really make sense to have Mercedes Benz cars and vans under the same roof? Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Mercedes Benz strategy update that's fully dedicated to Mercedes Benz vans. For more than 18 months now, Mercedes Benz has been a pure play cars and vans company, which means Vans is an independent yet fully integrated business unit within Mercedes-Benz. They have the freedom to make all the decisions necessary to cater to the individual needs of their Vans customers. At the same time, they have full access to and the benefits from technology and innovation sharing with our cars business. This includes exploiting synergies between the two. For instance, by using common parts and harnessing the purchasing power of the Mercedes-Benz Group. Unlike cars, the Vans business serves two distinctly separate sets of customers with different demands, luxury private Vans and premium commercial Vans. Our Vans division is perfectly positioned to outdeliver to both. On top, there's a very rational business side to it for us too. Today, the Vans already make a significant financial contribution to our overall business. In 2022, the Van division reported a solid 8% growth in sales and a stunning 66% increase in EBIT, just to mention two highlights. And Q1 clearly speaks for itself. These numbers are one part of the reason why I like to call Vans our pearl. I am convinced that there is so much additional room for growth in the field. And today's event is designed to show you why and how. First of all, our aim at Mercedes-Benz is to build the world's most desirable vehicles. That's true for cars and vans alike. And desire also is our shared strategic baseline. Let's look at uh, luxury private vans first. They drive just as easily as a passenger car and offer that desired extra space that so many of our customers appreciate for their families, hobbies, travel, and everything in between. And there are fully electric versions too. Now, what about our light commercial vehicles? This part of our business is all about fuel efficiency and quality to get the job done in the most economical and most convenient way possible. A capable and durable work van is yet another high-end tool for professionals, which of course has to come at the very competitive total cost of ownership. Here again, our commercial vans fully benefit from the innovation and scale of the Mercedes-Benz brand. And let's not forget the bigger picture. The world runs on our vans. There is an almost infinite number of use cases and applications. Whether you're waiting for your online shopping to arrive, for the ambulance to come to your aid, or for a maintenance worker to fix something around the house, our vans are system relevant products. And whether you're excited to head out to your next camping adventure or be shuttled in style to your nice hotel, our vans are at your service. Still, every now and then I get the question, Ola, does it really make sense to keep the cars and the vans business together under one Mercedes-Benz roof? My answer is clear. Yes, it does. First, vans complements our lineup of the world's most desirable vehicles. Thanks to different product cycles and market mechanisms, it makes our business more resilient. Second, we're able to take advantage of lots of synergies between cars and vans, as well as between private and commercial vans. And third, Vans makes a significant financial contribution to our company's business. I'm sure you'll find many reasons to agree during the course of this event. Thank you very much. I will see you later for the Q&A session. 
And with that, please allow me to hand it over to Matthias Geisen, head of Mercedes-Benz Vans. We are Mercedes-Benz Vans, founder of the van segment, innovators of transportation for people and goods, supporters of our customers since 1896. It's our people who make the difference. A lean and dedicated team from 87 countries. Proud to engineer and build our vans at five own production sites. In 2022, we delivered over 400,000 vans and e-vans in more than 150 countries. We are ready to serve in sales and service locations worldwide. For us, it's about more than vehicles. It's what moves our customers through their lives. From people to goods, from work to play. We offer exceptional technology and outstanding reliability across markets and industries. The perfect solution for every need. On our way to all electric and sustainable mobility. Whether private or commercial, luxury or premium, we build tailor-made solutions with our strong partners in hardware and software. We move forward with giant energy. Exactly. On the road ahead, Van EA, our new purpose-built electric architecture that sets the course for the future of mobility. This is us. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our strategy update Vans. As Ola mentioned in his introduction, for many people, our products are part of their day-to-day -day lives. At home, at work, and beyond. Mercedes-Benz Vans makes an important impact on so many aspects of society and life. We are both the founder and innovator of the light commercial vehicle segment, the segment that bridges cars and trucks and which originated with the first delivery vehicle back in 1896. And thanks to that history, our record of outstanding products and our brand we have a truly unique place in the LCV business. That's what I want to emphasize most today, our unmatched high-end position with the industry's best mix and best pricing, by far. To give you a better idea of what that means, let's have a short look at our portfolio today. Some 30 years ago, we created the Sprinter segment, today our flagship. It is our leading light commercial vehicle with many features and functionalities incorporated from Mercedes-Benz passenger cars. The Sprinter is by far the most valued vehicle in the class, favored by commercial buyers, drivers, and of course, on the used vehicle market as well. It defines the segment. The Sprinter contributes around 50% of our sales share, the mid-size V2 approximately 30%, and the private V-class around 15%. We have continued to set industry standards since the launch of the Sprinter in the early 90s, for example, by introducing advanced safety features and connectivity into the LCV segment. Today, we are the world's leading premium light commercial vehicle manufacturer, having delivered over 400,000 vans and events worldwide in 2022. Looking at the LCV segment in total, we operate in a highly profitable and attractive industry. Many of you joining us today are industry experts, but perhaps the exceptional overall profitability of the vans industry is not common knowledge yet. For a number of reasons, the LCV segment is one of the most attractive segments in the broader automotive industry. Let me explain why. Markets remain strong and are growing and the competitive environment is stable and concentrated. This stability is supported by very knowledgeable and loyal commercial customers. Due to long life cycles and a cost-driven approach with focus on reuse, the industry is less capital intense 
than other automotive industries. So, historically, the light commercial vans have been very profitable for our industry. But now let's look at Mercedes-Benz vans' unique position within this industry. We have an exceptional top-end product identity, being the market leader in the large van segment in Europe. And looking at the premium segments of all light commercial vehicles, we are in a clear leadership position. This is thanks to our attractive product and service portfolio, our strong mix and residuals, as well as a very favorable channel structure. We enjoy highest pricing power with significant premia. We additionally benefit from a balanced market coverage with Europe as our core market, followed by the United States and China on third position. But most important, our customers highly value our products and services, resulting in an industry-leading 74% repurchase rate for the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter in Europe. And let's not forget one crucial aspect. We have a strong partner in Mercedes-Benz cars. Together, we are able to leverage significant synergies. A component commonality rate of up to 50%, economies of scale in sourcing, lean and aligned processes from development to governance, technology sharing, and improved time to market for innovations in crucial areas like automated driving, car software, and electric electronic architecture. All of these factors have played a role in our strong double-digit return on sales results adjusted 11.2% in 2022. However, there are more opportunities ahead for further growth. We will cover those topics comprehensively throughout the presentation today. But let me emphasize one important topic. With our strong position today, it is our clear ambition to lead the industry to an all-electric future while simultaneously keeping a clear focus on the most profitable segments. But now let's talk about our way forward. We want to offer the world's most desirable vans and services today and in the future. And most desirable for our demanding customers and for us means focusing even more on the premium segments with the highest profitability. And of course, that starts with our products. We want to offer the best products in each segment. And we will continue to cater to the needs of both private and commercial customers. Let's start with our private customers. Our V-Class uniquely combines the functionality and cost efficiency of a van with the luxury appeal of a Mercedes-Benz passenger car. This exceptional positioning translates into very attractive profitability. To build upon this strong foundation, we will be presenting the new V-Class later this year. Here you see for the first time a glimpse at how we are planning to serve our status-oriented private customers. A totally revamped exterior and all new interior featuring the latest infotainment and assistance features. That's how we define van luxury. Now to our commercial customers. We will continue serving our commercial customers with a high level of dedication and highly specified premium vehicles. Currently, we are seeing a lot of focus, discussions and new entrants into the courier, express and parcel industry. For sure, this will be the one to electrify first. But this is by far not the largest and not the most profitable industry. Let me be quite clear. We want to maintain our strong position in this industry. But our customers range from lower priced industries through to premium RVs, meaning the camper business. What I want to emphasize, there are other highly attractive industries that offer us great opportunities to focus on. And our strategy is to have a strong footprint in the premium segments of all industries. More about this from Klaus Rehkugler, our head of marketing and sales in a couple of minutes. But now let's talk about our sustainable future. We are a vital part of the group's sustainable business strategy. That means that we are fully committed to our ESG activities within Mercedes-Benz AG, including our ambition 2039. 
a net carbon neutral fleet of new vehicles by the end of the next decade. Our target of up to 20% BEV share by 2026 and more than 50% by 2030 goes hand in hand with a significant reduction in CO2 emissions across the entire life cycle in new vans. And by offering fully electric vans for the transport of people and goods, we are also contributing to more livable cities. The transition towards electric only is ambitious as we have to fulfill different customer needs in parallel. As existing ICE models will continue to serve us well beyond the end of the decade, we have to keep them attractive. In parallel, we have to ramp up electric vans to handle this challenge. We are driving a substantial complexity reduction of the existing ICE portfolio and a streamlined offering for the new electric vans, while still addressing the customer use cases of the premium segments. Mario Pucher, our Head of Finance and Controlling, will share further details with you in the further course of the event. Our future is electric only and our roadmap towards reaching that target is clearly defined. Indeed, we started early. In 2010, we introduced our first electric series production van, the Vito E-Cell. Today, our complete portfolio is electrified, leading to a market share of over 20% in Europe in 2022 for the electric large and mid-size vans. And we are targeting strong growth in the electric segment. To reach that ambitious goal, we will start introducing our all-new purpose-built EV architecture VAN EA 2026. VAN EA is our newly developed, innovative, modular and scalable architecture. According to the electric-only strategy, VAN EA has been developed from scratch as a purpose battery electric architecture, fully utilizing the advantages of the new technology. To keep complexity and costs under control, this architecture will be the shared basis for all mid-size and large vans, from private V-class up to commercial Sprinter. To make it clear, for us, electrification goes hand in hand with a massive simplification. Of course, all of our product offerings are accompanied by an attractive portfolio of services and digital extras. Andreas Zugan, our Head of Development, will share further details with you later on. We are one of the most profitable LCV businesses in the world, and it is very much our intention to remain at the highest levels. Not just in 2022, which was a very good year despite tough conditions, if you look at those numbers. In Q1, we were able to increase all KPIs compared to the previous year, resulting in a return of sales of 15.6%. With the transition to electric drive, we will continue to targeting profitable growth. But while we have strong financial results, we cannot be complacent, particularly when we have clear opportunities to improve on the cost side. I would like to explain this. Let me be candid with you. I've talked about Mercedes-Benz vans having the best mix and the best pricing in the industry. That's a very nice position to be in. But while we've been strong on product, model mix and pricing, we have to admit that we've been less strong on cost. But that is changing. With our leadership team, we are going to target cost in an even more systematic way using openness, honesty and industry benchmarks as our reference point. Especially in the areas of product and technology, manufacturing as well as fixed costs and overheads. There are many opportunities and we are well advanced with our plans to pull costs out of the business. This includes rethinking our production footprint. The decision to locate our first pure electric light commercial vehicle factory for VNEA in Poland clearly demonstrates our stronger focus on costs. We have additionally identified other levers to further improve our financial performance. You will hear more on this from Mario Pucher and Francesco Ciancia, our new head of operations. Francesco brings excellent expertise in lean manufacturing from an efficiency-focused volume OEM. To be clear, we have long had the industry's best mix and pricing. 
we fully intend to maintain those strengths and even expand upon them. But if we can combine these powerful revenue drivers with an intensified focus on cost competitiveness, then things get really interesting. So let me sum it up. We are uniquely positioned in an attractive industry and intensely focused on value creation. Our success factors are an exceptional portfolio angled towards the upper segments, the very highest pricing power and brand attractiveness and customer loyalty, a clear focus on the most profitable markets as well as renewed, very serious focus on cost. And then a clear way forward with a highly ambitious technology roadmap to lead the industry to an all electric future. Now, how do we leverage our unique assets? We've implemented a new strategy based on our four strategic pillars. We will target premium segments in terms of regions, channels, products and industries with high margins. For example, we've strongly reduced the sales to less profitable industry segments, whilst increasing our focus, for instance, on the campus segment. We embrace our customers. We already have the most loyal customers in the market today, allowing us to grow lifetime revenues across all industries in the future even further. We aim to lead in electric drive and the digital experience with our all new Vanny A and our MBOS our Mercedes-Benz operating system. And we will continue lowering our total cost base and improving our industrial footprint. Our strategy is underlined by three guiding principles, sustainability, digitalization, and our highly motivated team. I took over as head of Mercedes-Benz Vans beginning of 2022. I'm well aware of the considerable strength of the business that I now lead. But I also know our weaknesses. In the last month, my team and I have worked intensively to develop our strategy and build a plan that will better position us for the future. We are privileged to be part of Mercedes-Benz, a badge of honor to have the three-pointed star on our vehicles. But with that privilege comes responsibility, and that includes delivering a very strong level of financial performance with margins that are within close range of Mercedes-Benz car's average. That is the goal, that is the mission. We've already proven that it's a credible objective with our recent financial results. With this clear strategy, our high level of ambitions and our focus on execution, I'm also confident that we will continue to demonstrate it going forward. I'm fortunate to have a great team at Mercedes-Benz Vans. You will now meet a number of these key leaders who will present our strategy in more detail. Klaus Rikugler, our Head of Sales and Marketing, will start. Thank you, Matthias. Let us start with the first pillar of our strategy, target premium segments and focus on profitable growth. We define our premium positioning by unchallenged leadership in four areas, brand, technology, customer focus, and sustainability. Mercedes-Benz Vans has a strong brand, one that is built on trust and our superior product substance. This is the number one reason for our undisputed pricing power in commercial industries, consequently translating into significant double-digit transaction price premia over all competitors. In some cases, this transaction price gap is substantial. These industry-leading price premia are at the same time accompanied by an outstanding 50% Mercedes-Benz Vans share in the German premium segments. Based on this premium positioning, we derive four areas of attack to further improve our profitability in the future. We are aiming for further profitable growth in our most important regions. Today, Europe already comprises our strongest market with a 60% share of total sales worldwide. We want to strengthen our position here. In the US, we have doubled our market share from 8% to 16% since 2018, which ensures us a strong market position as well. In China, our 9% V-class market share 
in the MPV market segment secures us a relevant stake in a segment which is deemed for further growth in its upper price bands. Our sales channel mix splits into a 70% share in the highly profitable retail and small fleet business and a 30% share in the larger fleet business in Europe. This channel mix strongly supports our ambition to continue to grow profitably. We see significant potential for further profitable growth in China and North America. In the US, we aim to substantially increase our sales by 2030. Therefore, we will be extending our product portfolio by adding both Vanier commercial vans and, for the first time, a Vanier private derivative to the US lineup. The purpose-built, all-new electric V-Class will have an unparalleled luxury positioning to cater stronger than ever before to the expectations of our sophisticated customers in China and the US. As a multi-industry player in the B2B business, we serve many different industries and are well positioned in their respective upper end price bands. Together with our upfitting partners, we offer well-equipped tailor-made vehicles that provide our customers with vans and services best suited to their specific commercial purposes. Today, more than 75% of the commercial large vans that we sell are upfitted. The majority of these vehicles are already well equipped and therefore represent profitable specifications. In 2022, our professional expertise and partner focus with Van Upfitters was ranked at the number one position amongst all OEMs. This close cooperation with our Van Solution partners is also reflected by the fact that all of them have already signed the letter of intent declaring their willingness to participate in our sustainability ambition 2039. The broad range of industries we serve makes our business resilient, which is a strong competitive advantage. Today, we serve nine commercial industries, and while each one has its own specific requirements and demands, they are all important for keeping our world running smoothly. All nine commercial industries are strategically important for Mercedes-Benz vans. For example, service and craft is the biggest industry in Germany, and of course also in our portfolio. Camper business is the fastest growing industry and the cap, the Courier Express and Parcel and Logistics has the highest request for all electric drive. For example, in the camper business, we have seen tremendous growth in recent years due to the growing desire for individual and independent traveling. However, there is still room to grow. That is why we want to expand our portfolio of X factory camper vans with a new model line of fully electric campers based on Van EA. We aim to define the next industry standard with our international camper business partners all around the world. But we also see profitable growth potential in other industries, such as in the cap segment. Therefore, we plan to offer a Van EA cap specific X factory derivative for the first time ever. The solution is being co-developed with the expertise of our CAP business partners. Coming to our second pillar, embrace customers and grow lifetime revenues. The customer is at the core of our business and we have the most loyal customer base. In 2021, our Sprinter repurchase rate equaled 74% in Europe. Our service retention rate in the first four years amounted to more than 70% in Europe. But now, Let's have a look at the whole customer journey in more detail. All of the following initiatives are aiming at further improving the business efficiency of our TCO conscious customers. First of all, we are in the process of shifting our business model towards a direct sales model, a model in which our dealers will act as sales agents in the future. This will enable us to manage discounts and eliminate intra-brand competition to ensure fair offers to our customers and reduce sales costs at the very same time. With this, we are targeting by 2026 
more than 20% in online sales, more than 75% direct sales volume in Europe, and the go live of our direct sales models in 20 markets globally. Within the purchase phase, we offer a superb point of sales experience with our trained and certified retail team. Qualified consultation, also considering the best upfitting solution to meet each customer's individual requirements. And on top of that, the consultation includes services for our customers' transition to e-mobility and tailor-made charging solutions. We are aiming to boost our already strong customer satisfaction rate of 4.5 stars even further. Coming to operations, I want to turn to a really crucial topic in the commercial vehicle segment, which is connectivity and digital extras. We are absolute believers in the value of data and the opportunity for software to help commercial customers. At Mercedes-Benz Vans, we have been working on vehicle software and digitalization for many years. We have numerous products already in use. Building on its experience, our digital strategy follows a straightforward yet comprehensive three-layer approach. In the first layer, we offer vehicle-related functions. We are already at a quite advanced stage. In 2022, in our core markets, Europe, the US and China, 70% of all new vans were connected to our Mercedes-Benz digital ecosystem. Our second layer consists of customer-specific digital extras provided by a unique steering device that we developed in-house, our onboard logic unit, an absolute USP. The solution enables our customers to integrate our products into their specific digital infrastructure. Our third layer will extend our offering with a selection of commodity services and third-party applications integrated into MBOS in the future. So, I would like to leave you with this takeaway. Mercedes-Benz Vans is at the forefront of LCV-focused software systems and digital extras. These will make our products even more attractive. Some we will be able to charge for. Hence our target, we are aiming for a relevant incremental EBIT contribution in the mid and long-term future. But I also must sound a note of caution. While software is becoming increasingly important to our customers, most fleet operators run a multi-brand fleet. They do this for reasons of scale, of flexibility and function. Large fleets are therefore highly unlikely to want to use or be able to use a single OEM software platform. We know our customers very well, and it's absolutely clear that while they value software, predictive maintenance and route planning, what they want is the ability for a vehicle not only to offer a proprietary software platform, but also to support independent specialists as well as customized software products designed to operate across their whole fleet. So that fact anchors our strategy. While we have developed excellent proprietary software solutions and will continue to improve them, our vehicles are also designed to support other software products for our customers. That is why in the future, we will extend our offering with our third layer integrated into MBOS, including commodity services and the possibility to integrate Android-based productivity applications. We believe this is most likely where the industry will go. And while it will improve profitability and efficiency for LCV operators, it is unlikely to drive a total revolution into the segment. More about the technical specifications in a minute from Marie, our head of electronic and electric systems. Furthermore, we are supporting the EV ramp up with tailor-made charging solutions. Alongside the existing and growing Ionity network, our commercial customers will also have full access to the all new Mercedes-Benz high power charging network that will consist of up to 10,000 high power chargers worldwide by the end of the decade, which will fully reflect the needs for our van customers as well. We will offer our digital service Mercedes Me Charge B2B for van customers as well 
with our new eSprinter, giving them access to 300,000 charging points in Europe. Mercedes Me Charge is one of the largest public charging networks in Europe. Our outstanding commercial customer service is the backbone of our business today and will become an even bigger differentiator for us tomorrow. Our core KPIs reflect our outstanding performance and proximity to our customer. With more than 4,200 Mercedes-Benz retail locations, we ensure an average drive time of approximately 30 minutes in Europe. In other words, we're close to our customers. We further supplement this proximity with our mobile repair service on customer premises or field technicians for complex repair cases and will continue to expand these offerings. This pays off. With every second new van sold, our customers purchase a service contract for an extended service partnership with us. Our customer service promise focuses on maximizing vehicle uptime and managing unexpected downtimes. Based on this mission, we have already rolled out a connectivity-based product, e.g. Mercedes-Benz Vans Uptime. Already today, 160,000 service center visits per year are being triggered digitally. This secures vehicle uptime and customer's loyalty. And last but not least, we're making repurchase easier than ever. Our options for reordering, retrieval, already allow our commercial customers to purchase their next Mercedes-Benz van as quickly and as conveniently as possible. With Mercedes-Benz Mobility, we accompany the customer journey with a wide range of financial service offerings, ranging from leasing over financing and rental to subscription. The offer of commercial rental services helps our customers staying flexible in their operations by buffering peak seasons with rented Mercedes-Benz vans. So let me wrap this up. We target premium segment positioning for commercial vans and luxury positioning for private vans. This will allow us to focus even more on high margin regions, channels, products, and industries. Our business remains robust due to the strategically wide balanced positioning in nine core commercial industries. We embrace our customers and they reward us with the highest customer loyalty in the LCV segment. We are transforming towards a direct sales business model to lower costs and to make our sales processes leaner. With our three-layer offer of digital extras, we are creating software-enabled recurrent revenues. And with that, I would like to hand over to Dr. Andreas Zygan, Head of Development. Andreas will provide a more in-depth look at how we are leading in electric drive and the digital experience. Thank you, Klaus. To embrace our customers means providing them with sustainable products and services. Mercedes-Benz Vans pioneered electric in vans with the 2010 launch of the Vito e-cell. The world premiere of the second generation e-sprinter was this February with a strong and positive resonance with both the media and public. After the efficiency drive last fall in Germany, our new e-sprinter just successfully completed a special test drive from Las Vegas to Long Beach, California. 275 miles or 443 kilometers without recharging the 113 kilowatt hours battery. If you have ever had the chance to experience this particular route, you will know how demanding it is. Coming back to our current electric portfolio, we have already sold more than 40,000 events. By the second quarter, 2023, we will be fully completed with an electric version of each model we sell. We lead in electric drive today and aim to lead tomorrow. Starting 2026 onwards, we will introduce our all-new purpose-built EV product portfolio and our van electric architecture for both private and commercial model portfolio. We are targeting an EV share of more than 50% by 
by 2030 wherever market conditions allow. With a new van architecture, we will secure our ambition to lead in electric drive based on really clever engineering. With Van EA, we will increase overall efficiency and performance in every aspect of the vehicle, including aerodynamics, drivetrain, tires and chassis. Efficiency is a key criteria for electric vans. The goal is to achieve a higher range with an optimal battery capacity, which is directly related to vehicle weight and costs. The development and launch of Vanier underscores our strong commitment to sustainability and is an important milestone on the road to achieving our ambition 2039 goals. Let's head over to Steffi Schmidt's strategic project lead Vanny A for a deep dive into our new electric architecture. Starting 2026, all newly developed vans for Mercedes-Benz will be based on just one single innovative modular and scalable architecture. According to the electric only strategy, Vanny A has been developed from scratch as a purpose battery electric vehicle. Vanny A is short for van electric architecture. All future midsize and large vans will be built on it, both commercial and private, whether in commercial use as a versatile premium all-rounder or as a private luxury van. Vanny A based vehicles will focus on added values for our customers and their individual needs. A modular and scalable architecture also means a high degree of scale effects as well as maximum synergies through leaner, simpler and faster processes. A maximally efficient use of resources in development as well as in production secures sustainable profitability. The three modules of Vanny A help to achieve these targets. First, the front module consists of the electric powertrain and the front axle. The module is the same in all Vanny A variants in an optimized common part strategy. The differentiation relevant to the customer takes place in the two other models. Second, the center module scales the vehicle length. This is also where the standardized battery case is placed. High voltage batteries with different capacities are installed within the case. Third, the rear module will be available in two versions, with an electric motor for all wheel drive variants of any A and without electric motor for the front-wheel drive variants. Based on these three modules, Vanny A allows for clear differentiation between privately and commercially used vans, as well as maximum synergies. Vanny A P stands for privately positioned vans in the midsize segment, whether for lifestyle-oriented customers with high standards, as a VIP shuttle, as a locally CO2 emission-free office, or for leisure active families thanks to the innovative Mercedes-Benz operating system, MBOS, Vanny AP is always on and masters all everyday challenges. And with planned WLTP range well over 500 kilometers, it is perfectly suited for all kinds of adventures, even outside cities. Vanny AC stands for commercial vans in the midsize and large segments. It is the ideal base for customers who value efficiency, reach and payload. Vanny AC Large offers space for almost every commercial need, even for customers who need more space than average. With its modular and scalable design, the architecture is tailor-made for different configurations and upfitter solutions, from Career Express and parcel delivery vehicles to ambulances or e-grocery vans, from municipal vans or flatbeds to lifting platforms or campus. Almost everything is conceivable. With Van EA, Mercedes-Benz Vans accelerates its course towards a fully electric future and its commitment to sustainability and the goals of Ambition 2039. Maximum added value for customers with sustainable profitability at the same time. Van EA clearly underscores the aspiration of Mercedes-Benz Vans to be lead in electric. As Steffi has just shown us, starting 2026 onwards, 
this new technology will enable us to consolidate our mid and large van portfolio down to only one architecture to reduce the overall complexity of our product portfolio. But it's not only about hardware. Digital features and the overall digital experience are a crucial factor in our customers' purchase decisions. Lead in digital experience will be indispensable for us in not just meeting, but exceeding our customers' expectations. How to do that? Please allow me to hand over to Marie Lenior Quervasseur, Head of Electric Electronics Systems. At Mercedes-Benz Vans, we are constantly moving forward with our strategy lead in digital experience in the private and the commercial van segment. Our goal for the commercial segment is simple, ensuring the full digital integration of our products into the activities of our customers. In brief words, we will make the van a fully integrated part of our customers' businesses. We started our journey some years ago and have a lot of value-added offerings already in place. Backbone for our digital offerings are datasets. We are able to retrieve datasets and load collectives from roughly 4 million vans in the field, resulting in several billion potential data insights, enabling us to enhance our future products and further improve their robustness and usability. Of course, all with the explicit consent of our customers towards Mercedes-Benz AG. Let me briefly give you some technical details. On the first layer, Klaus mentioned earlier, we offer around 30 digital extras. For example, a specific navigation for oversized vehicles like campers that need special routing due to the road limitation for large vehicles. For our private customers in the campers segment, we have developed our Mercedes-Benz Advanced Control. In short, MBAC. MBAC enables digital control of the living space via MBUX or a smartphone app. For example, functions like opening and closing of the pop-up roof, or activation of room lights and other camper-specific functions in the van. For our commercial customers, another service with high value is Mercedes-Benz Uptime, providing predictive maintenance using a rule-based approach to reduce downtime of the vehicles. Uptime is money. MB Uptime is based on more than 900 rules with 4,000 data points to cover the diagnostic codes of the vehicles. With MB Uptime, we detect anomalies before they turn into failures, allowing scheduled maintenance before the equipment breaks down. On the second layer, we offer even more customer-specific and highly relevant B2B extras. One example is the individual intelligent charging management we developed with and for DPDHL. This digital solution is based on our dedicated onboard logic unit, OLU, which gives us the unique ability to integrate our electric vans in the existing enterprise system of DPDHL in a seamless way. Hence, DPDHL can realize intelligent charging for their whole fleet. The OLU is hosting an in-house developed vehicle abstraction software layer to run third-party solutions like the concept of an API for the cloud. It even allows connections to the external backends of our customers. Additionally, upfitter solutions can be integrated into digital services. To give another example, using the OLU, it will be possible to sense the temperature in the back of an e-grocery van and display it to the MBUX screen to the driver while en route to the next delivery. The fleet manager will also receive the same information in parallel. To provide state-of-the-art car IT security and what we call controlled openness, the OLU comes with a dedicated in-house developed backend platform for managing and monitoring OLU devices in the field, as well as rolling out software updates. With MBOS, the OLU functionality will be an integral part of the EE architecture. With more high-performance computing units and an advanced set of sensors and actuators, MBOS will enable us to offer even more specific commercial applications for the customers. And for the third layer, for the first time with MBOS, we will offer a whole range of new and existing Android apps relevant to our commercial customers 
and most important, industries. These Android capabilities allow us to fulfill our customers' needs for multi-brand solutions. Those applications will be seamlessly integrated and drivers won't need to juggle smartphones or other handheld devices while driving our vans to carry out their jobs. To sum up, ease of use, efficiency, and safety for our customers. All in all, with our free layer approach, we will fulfill customer requirements for off-the-shelf solutions as well as highly individual functionality. Last but not least, based on MBOS and its technical capabilities, we want to achieve level three for our private customers by end of the decade. And while we will offer an entry-level set of driver assistance systems for our cost-driven commercial customers, we target to realize level four automated driving starting end of the decade to address the business potential of driverless transportation. As part of the Mercedes-Benz AG, we benefit from strong partnership and cooperation. These features are a glimpse into the future. But our customer will not have to wait so long to experience automated driving in the commercial fleet. From mid-decade, we will already provide L2 capabilities for Veni A. Thank you again, Marie and Steffi. To give you all a quick wrap-up, Mercedes-Benz Vans has a long history with an experience in the field of electric drive. Moving forward, it's our clear ambition to lead the industry into the electric era. With Veni A, we will introduce our purpose-built EV architecture, producing and launching all new mid-size and large-size van on only one architecture. With Veni A, we will also introduce MBOS, the Mercedes-Benz operating system. MBOS will allow us to offer even more digital extras, software-enabled upgrades for our commercial customers, including access to third-party apps. By using the same EE architecture as Mercedes-Benz cars, we benefit from common technologies and are able to realize maximum synergies in automated driving. For the road ahead, we have a clear target for automated driving, offering for private customers SAE Level 3 by end of the decade. And for commercial customers, we target to realize Level 4 starting end of the decade to address the business potential of driverless transportation. With the launch of Veni A-based vehicles, we will provide Level 2 capabilities. With all of this, we want to secure our goal to offering the most desirable vans and services. To effectively tackle this huge transformation, we also need to address the bottom line when it comes to controlling our costs. Mario Pucher, our Head of Finance and Controlling, will now give us a closer look at how we are approaching our cost structures within our transformation. Thank you, Andreas, for providing a glimpse into our technological future. Now I will explain how we are going to translate this into our objective, industry-leading profitability. First, let's talk about costs. We are tackling costs on all levels. Our strategic pillar lower focuses exactly on this. We have set up a comprehensive efficiency program to drive down costs at company, operations and product level. Let's have a closer look into what we plan on the company side. First, we will reduce fixed costs, especially by streamlining and digitizing processes. We are aiming for around 20% fixed cost reduction by mid-decade compared to 2019 actuals. And we are well on track. Also, we will continue to harness the power of synergies with Mercedes-Benz passenger cars. We are enjoying a competitive advantage from commonly used resources and the technical know-how of Mercedes-Benz. 
This leverages our objective, industry-leading profitability. Next to our company goals, efficient operations are a must to lower costs. That means we have to focus on an appropriate capital allocation and an optimized fixed cost structure. Therefore, we will reorganize our global industrial footprint. Let me hand over to Francesco Ciancia, Head of Operations. Francesco comes from an efficiency-focused volume OEM, bringing new ideas and an ambitious cost mindset to bands. He will tell us more about that. Hello, I'm Francesco Ciancia. I joined Mercedes-Benz Vans in 2022 to drive the transformation of the cost base in manufacturing. Coming from a company that is known for its efficiency, I'm excited to be part of the Mercedes-Benz Vans team as we move to combine best-in-class Vans with a radical improvement in cost structure. We are actively transforming our global production network to make it more efficient, flexible, and geared towards an electric future. We are expanding our network with our first pure electric light commercial vehicles plant in Javor, Poland. With this plant, we aim to set all new standards for productivity, lean operations, and sustainability in the manufacturing of premium ELCVs worldwide. The following short animation will give you a first impression of what it will look like. Of course, Javor will be net carbon neutral just like all the factories we own. However, we are targeting the use of 100% green energy for the first time through maximizing our use of sources like solar panels. The plant will also be modular flexible and scalable to cover increasing demands. In Yavor, we will exclusively produce purpose. This allows for lean and cost-efficient production and will go hand in hand with other significant changes in our manufacturing footprint. We want to build Venier in our plants in Vitoria, Spain, Dusseldorf, Germany, and in other countries as well. This will be accompanied by transformational changes that enhance productivity. Our multi-site footprint also maintains our ability to react to rapidly changing market conditions while optimizing our cost position. Our plant in Ludwigsfelde, the second of two plants in Germany, will continue to produce a Sprinter and eSprinter and will also become a competent center for event customization, for example, camper vans. With our highly skilled and motivated workforce, we will significantly improve our production processes and lower our production costs. Our increase in performance will be driven by dramatically reducing the complexity of our product portfolio, focusing on efficiency in the core production processes by reducing hours per vehicle up to 25% by 2025, coming from 2019, optimizing our energy consumption and using digital technology to increase efficiency across all our operations. These efforts will result in a significantly leaner cost structure and we lay the groundwork for a 100% profitable electric dry portfolio in the future. As I said before, we run a comprehensive cost efficiency program addressing all levels, company, operations and products. Now let's have a look at our product costs. As of today, we have already started to optimize the complexity of our current vehicle portfolio. By mitigate, we will reduce our portfolio variance by 30%, but still cover the same use cases for our customers. To face the transformation beyond 2025 with the Van EA1 architecture strategy, we will achieve further complexity reduction translating into significant economies of scale. Also, we will apply a flexible sourcing concept. That means we are sourcing components, either Mercedes-Benz internally or externally as off-the-shelf solutions. We will choose whatever is best suitable for us, especially in terms of cost. Now let's have a look at our financial KPIs. As Matthias said at the beginning, we are currently in a very strong position. After a very challenging year in 2019, 
with topics like litigations, discontinuation of X-class, etc., we have achieved a remarkable turnaround. Since then, we have improved continuously and delivered strong results over the last years. Most recently in Q1, we achieved exceptionally high figures with 15.6% adjusted return on sales. I think the figures speak for themselves. The success today is crucial to fund our investments into an all-electric future. So let's have a look at our indicators of change. These figures show successful first steps through our transformation. We already realized a 24% increase in our average sales price compared to 2019, with strong net pricing and a very favorable mix. Our R&D spendings remain consistent with previous years, focusing on our new BEV models and investing in our future. PP&E is down 17% by reusing existing assets and structures. Last but not least, we reduced our fixed cost by 7% since 2019 by building a leaner organization. Unfortunately, headwinds caused by inflation and the limited availability of parts have eaten up two-digit savings compared to previous years. However, for this year, we expect a step in the right direction towards our goal of around minus 20% by mid-decade. And this is just the beginning. Now, let me give you some examples for the application of our strategy in upcoming years. Our resilient business is based on our strong revenue streams. Revenue streams. With the strategic pillar, target and embrace, we aim to achieve a further push in product mix and net pricing. This results in a significantly growing average sales price until end of the decade. This goes hand in hand with a substantial content enrichment. We intend to keep our premium position for commercial vans and luxury position for private vans. With this, we serve a wide range of customers with a strong product mix. The shift to a direct sales model brings us closer to the customer. It enables us to manage discounts and eliminate intra-brand competition. Additionally, we expect digital extras, so-called software-enabled upgrades, to generate a relevant incremental EBIT contribution. On top, we have a strong customer service and parts business. Combining this with profitable growth in regions, channels, products, and industries underlines our objective industry-leading profitability. Ramping up our EV portfolio by introducing Vanier, including MBOS, and our new low-cost plant in Poland, we will require additional investments in our electric future. At the same time, we are reducing our ICE investments by 70% by mid-decade compared to 2019. To be clear, while we will be intensely cost-focused, absolute capex and R&D will increase in the next few years. Please recognize that capex and R&D levels have always been intermittent in the LCV industry due to long platform life cycles. Even in the past, we have had short periods of higher investments. These are followed by longer periods reaping the benefits of that investment with the product in the market. We will see this again in upcoming years for Vanier. We expect annual capex and R&D to increase to a peak of about 1 billion euro for BEF in 2025. While this marks a substantial increase on recent levels of roughly 0.7 billion euro for all R&D and PP&E spendings, it is essential to make this investment. Based on our latest planning, we will be able to reduce spendings again after 2026. It will set us up for an ongoing success in the market with the best possible BEV product 
and the best digital services. We also tackle our fixed and variable costs at the company, operations and product level. The key levers for the around 20% fixed cost reduction by Mitigate are streamlined and digitized processes, bundling of cross functions and synergies with Mercedes-Benz cars like joint sourcing and common development. A lot has been achieved already and inflation further increases our ambition. Our variable costs will decrease mainly through the reorganized industrial footprint, HPV improvements, complexity reduction and contracted battery cost improvements, making our objective industry-leading profitability viable also in the Beth world. All of these efforts support our financial ambition till end of decade, double-digit margin adjusted at Mercedes-Benz vans. Departing from today, we guided 11 to 13 percent return on sales adjusted for the full year 2023. We indicated to see ourselves at the upper end of this range for this year. We believe that we can hold the margin range until mid-decade. An EV share of up to 20 percent is compensated by ongoing strong industrial performance, low fixed costs and slight volume growth year over year. Beyond that, end of decade, we assume an EV share of more than 50%. In addition, the depreciation from the Vanier project and the reorganized production footprint will influence the margin. However, we believe we can hold the margin also at double digit, probably closer to 10%. Over the investment cycle, we see a cash conversion rate adjusted in the vicinity of 0.8. During the investment phase, we might be slightly below our current guidance. In the following years, we expect CCR adjusted to be on the level of 2022. Our clear ambition is to assure weatherproofness of our van business. A resilient private and commercial van business is core to master the transformation towards BEV successfully. With this, back to Matthias. Thank you, Mario. Thanks to everyone for today's in-depth look at our strategic goals moving forward. Let's summarize our four pillar strategy and how we want to build economic value and create future profitable growth. Our emphasis on luxury private vans and premium commercial vans will sharpen our ability to grow high margin regions, channels, products and industries. We are strengthening our customer centric focus for stable profit streams, offering customers products and services they desire. Vanny A, our innovative purpose built EV architecture with latest autonomous capabilities is our way into a fully electric future. Mercedes-Benz Vans digital experience will be based on MBOS, extended by B2B extras and including access to third-party apps. A more cost-conscious approach to our company, operations and products will facilitate long-term profitability of the van business. That is our plan and the entire van team is committed to making it happen and to see what makes us excited about the van business and how we are keeping the world moving. Let's take a look at this video now. Thanks for joining us today. They are beautiful. They are reliable. They are strong. And what are you doing to them? You get them dirty. You drill holes in them. You drive hundreds of thousands of kilometers and work in them. Oh, yes, of course, you even build gyms for dogs in them. And you know what? That's awesome! Because that is exactly what they are made for. Nachhaltigkeit ist in meinem Business extrem wichtig, deswegen haben wir einen E-Sprinter Elektrofahrzeug. When I saw that one, I just fell in love. When I stopped, everybody wants to take pictures and talk about the van.
Die einfachste Beschreibung vom Van war, glaube ich, erfahrende Almhütte. Das ist pure Freiheit, pure Unabhängigkeit. Ohne das Auto wäre ich gar nicht in der Lage, die Dinge zu erleben, die ich gerne erleben möchte. One of my favorite features of all is the name Mercedes and the reputation that precedes it. So for each one of you with a great or even a little bit crazy idea, there is a van out there to put your heart and soul into. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Stefan Hoffmann speaking and I'm heading Investor Relations and Treasury. I'd like to welcome you to our Q&A session of our Vans Strategy Update. For this Q&A session, we are happy to have with us Ola Kelenius, our CEO, Harald Wilhelm, our CFO, Matthias Geisen, Head of Vans, and uh, Mario Pucher, Head of Finance and Controlling Vans, who you have already seen on stage. You probably all joined the presentations right before. Just as a quick reminder in advance of our upcoming Q&A session, we would like to politely ask you to focus your questions on the presented matters. Thank you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, you may ask your questions now. I will identify the questioner by name. However, as always, please also introduce yourself with your name and the name of the organization that you are representing before asking your questions. A few practical points. Please ask your question in English. And as a matter of fairness, please limit the number of questions to a maximum of two to give everybody on this call the opportunity to ask questions. The operator will now explain the procedure. Thank you. If you want to ask a question, please press nine and the star key on your telephone keypad. To remove the question, please press 9 star on your telephone keypad again. Please note that dialing 9 star a second time during the call will automatically withdraw your question. Please refrain from pressing the key combination multiple times during the call. Again, for a question, please press 9 star on your telephone keypad. And if you have any difficulties during this conference, please press 0 and rhombus on your telephone keypad for operator assistance. We start the Q&A now, and the first question goes to Patrick Hummel from UBS. Thank you, it's Patrick Hummel, UBS. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for uh, the presentation of your segment. Uh, that's definitely uh, very helpful to better understand the business. So uh, I'd like to uh, go for two questions, please. First one um, is on the manufacturing side and, and your focus on efficiency. Um, not too long ago, you were uh, looking at establishing a uh, manufacturing, uh, joint manufacturing plant together with Rivian, which did not happen. So I'm just wondering to which extent scale and partnerships with other VAM producers are an important element to safeguard profitability in the long term. I assume this uh, plan that you presented is, is, is based uh, on, on a standalone um, kind of uh, um, uh, uh, manufacturing footprint, but um, any color you could share in terms of uh, how much you're going to pursue uh, manufacturing synergies with others uh, would be appreciated. And my second question is, um, it, it, it ties into the ADAS topic. And um, you, you said at the beginning of the presentation, the industry is very stable, and that's one of the reasons why it's so profitable. Um, if you think about the arrival of autonomous vans, whenever that is, uh, that would probably be the exact opposite of stable. And you have some very powerful players looking at um, you know, achieving that autonomy, be it Amazon with Zooks, be it uh, Brightdrop, GM, uh, and, and, and Tesla talked about the RoboVan. So um, is your roadmap for ADAS, which is, I would say, more or less in sync with passenger cars, maybe even with a bit of a time lag uh, versus passenger cars, is that um, you know ambitious enough, or are you taking the risk here of um, massively losing out in the long run whenever autonomy um, is, is is really ready for prime time? And we all know that timelines got pushed out, but um, 
to me, it sounds like your plan is not really um, to to have a fully autonomous uh, ban for logistics for deliveries um, over over the business plan. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Matthias, I, I suggest both for you uh, efficiency road uh, efficiency partnerships and ADAS roadmap. Yeah. Absolutely. So then let's start with the efficiency topic first. Um, based on our van ER architecture, we have decided that we will definitely have our independent architecture and to make sure that we can use the advantages of the new technology like e-mobility, we have decided to merge our full mid-size segment and our large segment onto one platform Van EA, which gives us the corresponding scale to be independent, so we, we don't need to be in a, in a partnership, um, and this is the basis. Then we also decided last year that this Van EA platform will be built also in our brand new factory, which will be focused on electric drive only indeed. And getting to your point of Rivian, that was um, the original plan that we built this factory a, a bit larger, because the original plans were that Rivian would also um, come to Europe with their operations. That was the original plan. Rivian has decided for a focus on the US market, which we uh, fully accept. Um, so we continued with our original plan to build this factory for Van EA on our own. And as I said, the scale effect is pretty massive because of us merging basically everything from a V-Class up to a Sprinter on one platform. So that's on the efficiency piece. Uh, let's come to the others piece. I mean, one of the, the, the things uh, Ola mentioned in, in his introduction as well was that we share the corresponding synergies with uh, our strongest cooperation partner, which is Mercedes-Benz Passenger Cars. So Vani A will be fully based on the electric electronic architecture of, um, of our passenger cars. And so we also have full access to the autonomous functionalities um, accordingly. And our clear plan is to have a level two, level two plus um, in the market launching Van EA, then to move towards level three on the private luxury side. And that will kick in whenever we, we are right and, and prepared in this segment. And coming to your point of the, um, of the commercial segment, there we believe that level four will play a, um, a role, absolutely. We have made sure that based on our architecture, we have the corresponding installation spaces, the redundancies, everything we need to also fully operate on a level four basis. But I also want to um, be clear here, we believe that this is a technology which will rather kick in end of the decade, beginning of next decade. And if you look at our segmentation, um, I showed in, in my um, introduction as well, um, this is only a very small piece of the overall industry. So we have a very, very strong and resilient footprint because we cover comprehensively all nine plus one industries. And the industry, for example, for hub to hub transportation, which matters most here is especially the last mile, which is by far not the biggest one. So um, we will be prepared for that, but we also have a basis in all the other segments. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Patrick. From Zurich to Frankfurt, Tim Rokossa, Deutsche Bank. Thank you very much. I think Patrick was just trying to clarify something, but then I go ahead. Um, Stefan, I hope this is still in line with the content uh, delivered. I think, first of all, this was a really good presentation, number, strategy, not much more than we can ask for. And certainly Vance does not get the credibility that it deserves. But I think he dodged what is probably the most important question to investors. And you hinted to that in your intro, actually. The key question is not if this can be a good business. To be honest, I think we never quite understood why it wasn't as good as it is right now with your positioning and pricing. The question is if you are the best owner of this asset. And the V-Class clearly is a premium asset, but it has a lot of commercial customers as well. Certainly your Sprinter product does have. And it's very different to those that you are attracting with the presentation that you held in Monaco. So whilst this was a very good presentation, I think we've heard almost nothing about why this is a very integral and important part of the Mercedes-Benz group. I see that software is one, obviously a few hundred thousand units as well, but Ola and Harold, maybe to you, can you please clarify why you think Vans should remain part of Mercedes going forward? And then secondly, looking just a bit at the past because we have seen the pattern of substantially better profitability over the last three years in many other instances in the automotive world as well you had quite disappointing times between 2018 and 2020 can you maybe nail it down to a few points that you really changed that made you as profitable as you are today versus those two three relatively dark years that we've seen to give us confidence that you remain as profitable going forward thank you 
Ola, are you the yeah, right owner? Yeah, I'll let uh, Tim. Um, <laughs> happy to do so. As we saw in the presentation um, uh, with uh, Matthias and the team, is the van business in its own right uh, is a profitable, strong business. It underlies slightly different market mechanisms than the classic passenger car business with different uh, market cycles, but also different regional footprint. So in a way, the strong division inside Mercedes provides uh, a resilience factor, a little bit of a hedge uh, to, to the cycles that you would have on the passenger car side. But I think it's one thing that's very important to consider here, which is very different from what we did with Project Focus with, with our truck business, is that um, if a car company is the tree, the van business is a branch. And I'm not aware of any large van player that does not have a tree to attach to. So the synergies between a car company and a van company is much, much bigger. I think on the bill of material side, we're at or above 50% of the bill of material. So a standalone van business is certainly a less viable proposition. Then you go into the intersect, intersect uh, section here between the two. I'm looking at this EQV to my right here. This unique segment that we have built over years with a strong price premium for specific customers that are looking for a larger vehicle, a people mover or some kind of a space concept uh, for specific customers or for a specific period in your life. That has been a significantly, significantly growing and important segment for us. And I think we, we haven't seen the end of the road of this. Uh, on my recent rather long trip to China, I saw uh, more vans than I had expected, many of which were Mercedes, which of course made me happy, but many of which were even volume producers that sell uh, vans in that class for above 100,000 euro a piece. And I was thinking to myself, van EA, opportunity. And that goes further. I think Matthias alluded to the RV segment in the US and so on. So even in the market, one segment, a profitable segment of the vans actually does fit quite well to what we're doing on the passenger car side. So I think there's a whole host of reasons to say, uh, we have a large passenger car business, but we also have a very attractive van business that provides resilience for our overall business model. And the purpose of today was to lift that out of the shadows a little bit, uh, uh, because we seem to talk only about passenger cars when we usually meet. Thank you, Ola. And uh, Mario, on the profitability, kind of what has sustainably changed since the more challenging times? Yeah. Thank you, Tim, for the question. Um, we managed the turnaround uh, coming from 2018, 2019, mainly because we focused. We focused directly on a profitable growth, yeah? not only uh, on products. We also focused on the profitable growth on the products and regions, channels, and also in industries. Uh, that means, as you could see all, uh, all, also on the slide, the ASP was uh, growing up in the last years. Uh, by 24 uh, percent uh, compared to 2019. But also on the cost, we did a very good job. We focused also to reduce our fixed cost, to optimize our operations. Uh, as we saw also, we had a clear target uh, for a reduction of our HPVs. And also for the product costs we focused and variable costs. We, I think we, we are really focused now on, on the revenue side as well on the cost side to optimize our product and also our product portfolio. For example, also our complexity, what we mentioned in, uh, in the slides beforehand. Perhaps I can just add one thing. I mean, you, you picked 2018 and 2000, 2020, which, which makes a lot of sense. But let's also look at the whole decade. The whole decade we have um, basically operated at very, very healthy margins. They, they may not, not appear to be too high from today's perspective, but if you look at the automotive industry, back in these years, uh, also the van business in those days was, was a very strong business, but you picked exactly the right, uh, the, the, the right years, and I think Mario could, could, could explain well the, the reason for that. Aaron? Maybe Tim, a point I would add is, um, I think you will not doubt or contest uh, the belonging of the V-Class uh, to the Mercedes uh, side of things, to the private use side of things, as uh, Ola pointed out, and, and you, Matthias. Uh, but I think there's an important point. I mean, uh, to do the investment into the platform, um, you, you need to have some scale. And probably uh, the private use case is not, is not big enough 
uh, to have uh, the economies of scale you need to command. Therefore, you need to have the commercial side of things. And in return, you couldn't do the commercial side without having the private use. Um, and I think, therefore, I mean, this is a key point which we discussed intensively as part of our capital allocation over the last 12 or 24 months, uh, where we have come to the conclusion that obviously next uh, to a decent profitability, as you can see, it is also a meaningful thing in terms of optimizing capital allocation. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. Patrick, I'm sorry if you had a follow-up question. We, we didn't hear it. If, if uh, you want to go in the queue ag again, then uh, just dial the, the star and the nine if there's a follow-up question. Now from Frankfurt to London, I have a few questions coming out of London. We start with uh, Jose Asumendi from JP Morgan. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks for the uh, very detailed presentation. A couple of questions, please. Um, can you comment a little bit the, uh, the peak to trough margins in, in the business? And I'm trying to understand, with all the cost actions you've done in the last years, with everything that's coming up in the coming two to three years in terms of uh, the reduction of fixed costs and uh, you know, continued improvement of the product. W what do you think margins would be if volumes would be down? If volumes would be down 20 to 30 percent, how do you think about this big to trough margin? Um, you know, uh, thesis in the next in the next uh, in the next cycle. And then second, Ola, I would love to hear a little bit more strategically. Why is the pickup truck uh, the, the pickup segment? not uh, strategically uh, a segment that is in of interest for you, especially when you think about, you know, you, you have ultimately the brand, the technology and the platform. So why would this segment not be of interest for you strategically in, in North America? Thank you. Okay, Mario, on the kind of margin downside in a, in a, in a downturn market scenario. Yeah, um, Jose, thanks also for your question. Um, I think we, focused on the value growth, not on the volume growth, what we currently have in our plan. And it means even if the market goes more from a sunny scenario to a cloudy weather scenario, uh, we are very uh, resilient business case yeah, because of we have this cost efficiency program, comprehensive cost efficiency program over all levers. And um, here we see a very good uh, situation in our, uh, in our uh, planning currently. And therefore, we also uh, guided you with this 11 to 13 percent ROS uh, two weeks ago or four weeks ago. Um, and uh, we are very convinced that we can hold this margin also um, for this year for sure. We also indicated that we will stay in the upper end. You know, but also when we have a look forward um, in the BEF world, uh, we also said uh, we will keep the double digit margin. Yeah. And maybe it was a, uh, it's new to me that you love the weather chart so much. Uh, <laughs> you might have noticed yeah. that we took it away. We only did, we only did one weather. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we uh, just used to sun. No, uh, I think I mean, 2022 in terms of volume was not really I mean, a great year, right? Yeah. Uh, and you, you guys I mean, did a fantastic job. And uh, with more improvement to come, I think more resilience to come. You can also weather lower volumes. And again, I mean, uh, the proof has been demonstrated. <clears throat> so to your question, Jose, on pickups, if you look at the world of pickups, I would say there are two main markets. The one that is by far and away the most profitable one is the full size pickup market in the United States, dominated by traditional players, but of course, new players that are entering in. Uh, uh, to be in that market, you would have to go all in and in fact, we don't have an architecture for a full-size American-style pickup. And there I'm not so sure, because that would then be on, more on the passenger car side in terms of where you would pos position that from an image point of view. I'm not so sure that Mercedes is the right play for that. The other pickup that you have in Asian markets, or you have it in South America, or you have it in South Africa, or a little bit in the craftsman world in Europe, but not so big, is is more what I would call compact to normal, large to mid. That's a cutthroat business. It certainly doesn't fit to our brand image. We tried it. Uh, that was, by the way, part of the not so fantastic financial results in 2018 and 2019. 
So I think we, we gave that a go, uh, but we quickly realized that that was not something that's going to be long-term financially successful for us. So we cut our losses and we stepped out of it and we have no plans of coming back in again. And we, we've also talked briefly about uh, capital allocation. And I mean, we have a lot of ideas what you could do based on VNEA, but we also have a very clear focus. And this focus is clearly in our home turf and our home turf is medium to large vans. That works perfectly well from commercial up to private. And that's what this uh, platform is made for. So clear focus on, on those two segments of the market. Thanks, uh, Jose. And we continue with uh, George Gaillet from Goldman Sachs. Hi. Can you hear us? We heard a hi. I, I, I can. Yeah, sorry. Um, yes, just two questions from me. Um, the first one is, obviously, you've seen a strong evolution in the ASP, and you're hoping to grow that further in coming years. Can you grow the ASP while also reducing the TTO for your customers on the commercial side? At face value, these two objectives would seem to pull in the opposite direction, but, ha but perhaps it is possible to achieve both, and maybe you can provide a bit more elaboration on that. The second question I had was really on the luxury and premium side. Um, based on observations from London, it seems that every top hotel and high net worth individual now has a V-Class in their fleet. Can you talk about how that market is evolving at an industry level and what you are seeing by region? And how big an opportunity could this be for Mercedes going forward? And related to this, is it unreasonable to assume that the margins on this part of the V-Class portfolio are comparable to the top end luxury on the car side? Thank you. Yes, I suggest you take the first two one and Harold the one on the comparison in with regards to margin van versus top end. Yeah, then then let me state, uh, start with the ASP. As Mario has shown, we've already increased the ASP, um, but we what what's our focus is profitable growth in products, in regions, in industries, and in channels. So we believe that with the product substance plus the services we are offering, we can increase. But what we increase normally as well as our residual values, because what you could see throughout the presentation, we have the strongest residual values. So if you calculate the overall TCO, it's very, very healthy still. So we believe both can go to your question hand in hand. Uh, to the second question on the V-Class, uh, of course, that's a, a very nice uh, question because we said we want to position the Vani A platform more towards luxury. We'll do a first step now with the existing V-Class. Um, we gave you that glimpse of how that may look like from a design perspective. But then coming 2026 20, onwards, we see a strong growth potential of, of the V-Class um, in the European markets, yes, but even more in, the, in China, where, Ola, you mentioned that uh, a bit earlier, where you see plenty, plenty of, of those vehicles uh, driving around right now, because in China, um, spaciousness is, is the new luxury, and everyone's heading in this direction. And um, Ola said as well, we, have, uh, we, we see a lot of volume OEMs basically demanding luxury pricing, and we believe that with Vanny A, we can define the pinnacle in this segment, so big growth poten potential in China, where we right now only have an 8% share overall. But we also see this potential in the United States, where we haven't launched uh, the, the V-Class today. We see a lot of potential uh, there as well with this luxury position of this vehicle. So we, 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 we are convinced that it will go in the right direction when it comes to luxury positioning privately. Well, George, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, some, some con internal competition is good as well uh, for the margin crown, right? Um, so, uh, and as you could see in the first quarter, these guys uh, tried to challenge uh, Ola and myself on the car side pretty much. And successfully so, by the way, congrats. Um, so V-Class, uh, I think, was always I mean, a very healthy margin, uh, but thanks uh, to the pricing action, the continuous ca cost effort, uh, Matthias and Mario talked about, I mean, obviously sits at even a higher space I mean, today. Uh, and I think, I mean, with the potential to develop, as Matthias just pointed out, I mean, the product features, I mean, probably there's some more juice uh, to get out of it in the future, in particular then in the context of um, uh, the next generation and, uh, and the updates uh, to, to come here. Uh, so, yeah, I would conclude by maybe by saying, uh, 
uh, it belongs to the entry side or it has an entry ticket into the top end uh, margin territory of the cars. Uh, but we keep the competition up, so there are still some in the top end of cars which sit above, obviously. Great. Great to have internal competition. <laughs> and the next gentleman in line is Horst Schneider from uh, Bank of America. Yeah, um, good afternoon. Thanks for taking also my questions. Um, I'm not sure if I missed it during the presentation, so therefore I'm asking. Um, not sure if you mentioned anything about volume grows, when I look at your current level of uh, unit sales, then we are still substantially below the level of 2019. So the first question that I would have is, when you expect um, to return to this 2019 sales level, I could imagine the downturn was also related just to kind of shortage. And do I uh, read basically also then the capacity addition right in the way that you expect long-term something like 5% annual volume growth? That's number one. Um, number two is, again, just confirmation of the statements that were made on profitability, just that I got it right. So you said that you want to maintain the current level of margins, 11 to 13 percent, despite the big step up in investment, and that after the margin comes down to 10 percent. Can you maybe explain again the path of profitability that, that you have described? Thank you. Matthias, volume? Growth. Yeah. Let's start with the first one. Yeah, volume growth. Um, I think you mentioned it um, some minutes ago. We, we clearly prefer value growth over volume growth. So right now we are operating in a very, very healthy overall volume situation, although the volume is currently split between two architectures. So that's going to change as, as I explained earlier. Um, so it's not that we want to rule out uh, growth, not at all. Uh, our strategy is clearly towards profitable growth, but we only want to grow where we can do it in a profitable way. And we just touched the topic of, of the V-class, so the 20% the of our overall portfolio, which are privately positioned, where we will make, make a big, big step with this product, then fully electric to, to the US and to China, where we, of course, see corresponding volume growth. But we also see profitable uh, growth on the commercial side, for example, when it comes to uh, the camper business, where we, we have a good, good stronghold right now, but not good enough. We could improve there as well. So also on the commercial side, there is a lot of um, room where we can grow, but profitably grow. So um, I, I would say that uh, we'll, we'll explain how that works. And uh, to your question, when we will see the, the volume level um, back again, don't want to make any forecast now, but at least if you look at the first three months of this year, that was uh, best ever Q1. So I think we are um, good in shape. And uh, Mario, there was a question on the margins and the path to profitability. <clears throat> yes, was, um, thanks also for this, uh, for this question. Um, the transition of our margin uh, coming from this year, yeah, as we um, explained already, we had guided and indicated for this year, 2023, this uh, new guidance from 11 to 13 percent. Coming and have a look now, um, when the, the BEF share is growing up, up to 20 percent, then for sure we see lower margins. But this will be compensated by the fixed cost on the one hand, but also we see this, uh, just from uh, Matthias also mentioned, slightly increase of the volume by year by year. It's only a slightly increase because we focus really on the value growth. Value growth. And uh, in addition, we see this really strong industrial performance. This means also in the, until mid of decade, yeah, we will see us in, still in the range of our guidance yeah, and have a look uh, until end of the decade, when the BEF share will increase up to more than 50%. Yeah, for sure, we have then the, uh, the way on the margin coming from the depreciation for the investment, what we do for the um, Vanier project, for the new plant in Poland, for the MBS and so on. But uh, even here, we see a double digit um, and also mentioned in my presentation, perhaps uh, a little bit closer to 10%. Mm -hmm. but, uh, just follow up on, a quick follow up on that. Um, when uh, then you show this 1 billion euro capex for EV, you say capex and R&D investment, could you maybe provide a split? Because I think this 1 billion also then includes the capex for the plant in Poland. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, it's including the investment also for Poland. That means of all the investment includes uh, the investment for the new architecture, Benier architecture structure. Uh, and uh, new plant in Poland, and, and as well also the uh, investment in the new software and the MBOS. 
And again, if I can come back to my point before, that's why you need to have the scale of the commercial and the private use together. Uh, otherwise, uh, that wouldn't fly and would not generate the double-digit margins also in an electric area. Yeah. The higher proportion really comes from CapEx PPE, right, towards 25 because of this plant ramp-up. It's not just the plant, it's plant and R&D, but we haven't broken it's it out separately. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Okay, Horst, thank you. And uh, we continue with uh, Daniel Reska from Bernstein. Hi, it's Daniel from Bernstein. Uh, thanks for the insights and um, for the presentation. Could we dive a little bit into the top line ambitions as it relates to electri electrification? Um, and one is kind of, how do you see the BEVs in relation to the growth? Do you expect the BEVs here to be growth enhancing, giving you access to new customer segments? Or are electric vans rather replacing orders that would have been combustion engines otherwise? And then, secondly, as you think about continued electrification, you know, towards the end of the decade and beyond, do you think the BV pricing premium will develop differently from cars, given the TCO considerations in the commercial business? And also, won't there be kind of a headwind to the services and parts revenues you highlighted today? Thanks. Matthias? suggest you take over yeah so um, as indicated in the presentation we indeed believe the overall ramp up of the battery electric vehicles will be slightly slower than on the passenger car side 20% um, up to 20% in 2026 um, and then uh, above 50% in 2030 um, let me explain why we are operating in very very different industries uh, from ambulances to last mile delivery to the craftsmen at home so uh, finally all of those industries will have a completely different pace in electrification big fleet operators of last mile companies of course have their own sustainability ambitions um, in in-house and push strongly towards electrification. There are other segments where the ramp up will be much slower. It's ex especially the, the business of the, the, the um, electrician, for example, having one or two, two vans, he may decide much later um, than one of those fleet operators I just mentioned. So the speed in general will be, will be slower. And to your question, will it only replace or will it basically also um, attract new customers? In the commercial field, we believe that it will, in most of the cases, replace um, existing customers because they are so use case specific and those needing a van for doing their business today um, will also need it in a similar way uh, tomorrow. Um, when it comes to the, um, to the premium, um, I think the premium is not only driven by the product, but it's driven by the product, hardware, software, the TCO, and finally, um, also all the services we offer around. Um, so we believe that we can, we can keep, uh, keep the um, corresponding price premium because we position our vehicles in the upper, upper segment of the markets. So we believe that that will also assure us a corresponding, um, corresponding um, profitability in the future. And services and parts. parts. And service and, and parts, yeah, indeed. So what we do, of, of course, I mean, the service and parts business plays a major role um, today. So it will in the future because I just explained that the overall ramp up of the battery electric vehicles will be slower. So the headwinds you mentioned uh, will be there, but in a much damped, uh, much more damped way because the overall carpool in the market is, will still, for the, for the next 10 years to come, will be highly d dominated by the vehicles with a combustion engine. And in addition to that, we also work on um, additional profit streams. I think Marie explained it nicely, what we are offering in the world of digital services, etc., which will also create profit streams, uh, which we don't have to that extent today. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for your questions. And uh, we continue with Henning Kosman from Barclays. Yeah, thanks, Stefan, also for taking my question. Um, if, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to take a, a slightly different angle at the profitability again. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to reconcile um, why the margin would, would drop closer to 10% again by, by the end of the decade. Um, I appreciate you, you perhaps in the, in the Q1, you didn't have the R&D and, and also not the BEV dilution that you're expecting more, more mid to long term. But um, if I take as a proxy, for example, the 50 bits dilution uh, for um, higher BEV sales that you're guiding in the car business, 
um, and even considering the R&D, you're talking about these 20% fixed cost savings, variable cost savings, complexity reduction, further ASP growth, uh, benefit from direct sales. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get a feeling, are, are you just being really conservative here? Or, um, yeah, perhaps give us a, a, a bit of color what we still might be missing um, in, in terms of this margin normalization uh, in the midterm. And um, also coming back to the um, uh, positioning of the Vans business um, in the uh, overall Mercedes Benz group, um, I appreciate what you say on uh, uh, productivity and efficiencies and economies of scale. Um, maybe we can talk about the consumer side of things a little bit. I think if I understood you correctly, you said at one point the Vans customers, even the commercial Vans customers, will also, also have access to the proprietary charging solutions. Can you give us a, a bit of comfort that that won't compromise, for example, the Maybach customers' uh, experience if they have to share uh, the proprietary branded charging with a service and crafts commercial Vans customer? How, how, do, you, how do you perceive that? Mario, the first one, profitability towards the 10%. Yeah, thanks, um, Henning. Um, yes, the 10% is mainly driven by the way of the depreciation of our investment, what we have. And um, therefore, mid of decade, yeah, we will uh, have this with the start and ramp up of the Vanier product and with a new plant in Poland. Uh, here we will see and um, have the impact in the margin out of uh, the depreciation of the investment we have to do. Let's not forget, which is true for the whole auto industry, that the variable cost up for electrification for cars or vans is a burden and is a headwind. And we think it's prudent to not assume neither for cars nor for vans that you can pass that 100% on to the customer. So there is a structural effect from that that we try to combat with all the different measures that Mario mentioned. Thanks. On the question. Okay. Uh, whether a Maybach customer would uh, would have an issue if at the charging point uh, he, he would see um, uh, yeah, more commercial van customers. Who wants to take it, Matthias? Or Ola? Yeah. yeah. Matthias? I mean, uh, based from a technology perspective, I explained that earlier, uh, of course, we, we share the same technology, so we have made sure that from a technological perspective, that's feasible. Um, of course, we will set it up in a way that it's not disturbing any kind of uh, luxury customers parking right next to a Sprinter. But let's also be, be quite clear talking about the European market now. Um, our brand of Mercedes-Benz is built on trust and that has been built up over the last, basically over the last century. And it has been built up by cars, by vans and by trucks. So this company has always been known for uh, offering luxury passenger cars, but also, for example, premium commercial vans. So at least in Europe, it's not a big surprise that there are also vans in the market with a, with a star on the hood. Um, and uh, it has uh, never been a, a problem because that's how this uh, market has built up the trust over the last hundred years. So I think we, we find a good way to, to separate what you just mentioned. In addition to that, uh, you have to look at the diverse customers that you have on the van side. If you talk about the ones that theoretically could clog your charging system, those are more the fleet operators that maybe do last mile, but they don't go and charge where the Maybach customer goes and charge. They will do depot charging. So our team that is in, uh, in Harold's area that work on this, they are looking at the whole spectrum. So we will work with those commercial customers to give them depot solutions and quite often they will charge those overnight and they won't need to charge during the day because they're stopping, delivering, going a little bit, stopping and so on and so forth. So we're not too worried about it. Thanks, Ola. Thanks, uh, Matthias. And thanks, Henning, for your question. We have time for a last one. Um, and the next gentleman is uh, Stephen Reitman from Societe Generale. Uh, yes, good afternoon. I'm Stephen Ryman here. I apologize. I missed um, the opening of the presentation. I'm, I'm actually traveling at the moment. Um, but again, I'd like to ask about the V-Class. Um, it's obviously um, been a very impressive uh, success story. Um, and I would guess probably looking at the vehicles, it's probably one of your most expensive four-cylinder vehicles you actually sell across the Mercedes total group. 
So my question really is, is has that been a limitation in terms of how you've been, been able to develop the V-Class? Um, and so with electric drivetrain, could we really see performance versions which really take your AT ASPs on that vehicle line way higher? Um, and it gives a new opportunity to have a sort of performance vans. Thank you. Good idea. I'd I, I love to take this one. <laughs> <Can I? laughs> um, abs absolutely right. So t today um, it is based on, on a different platform, and that was exactly something we, we plan to do differently uh, in the future going forward. We said we want to clearly position this V-Class in the luxury segment. We want to make sure that it has all the latest and greatest technologies of a passenger car. We already made a good step now with the existing one, but we can go a much wider step now with the Vani A architecture because we can clearly also from a design perspective, differentiate now um, commercial vehicles and the private V-Class. So it will be exactly the same platform, will be the same architecture they will be based on, but it will have a proprietary um, uh, design and uh, fully cover all the uh, luxury features a passenger car will, will cover as well. That includes what you may uh, also relate to, in, in includes a correspondingly a high increase in, in performance. Four-wheel drive version uh, will uh, at least uh, combat uh, the AMG GT at the red light. We shall see. Harold Thank sometimes you. has a smile on his face, so this time you also had a smile on your face. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Stephen, thanks for the idea. Having an AMG version of the V-Class, uh, uh, I think, will, will, will fuel the internal competition further. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks a lot for your questions, for being with us today. In addition, many thanks to all of you here um, uh, for the presentations and for answering the related questions. After the event, our team at Investor Relations remains at your disposal, as always, to answer any further questions you may have. And now to all of you, wherever you are, have a great morning, great afternoon, or a great evening. And we look forward to talk to you soon. Thanks and goodbye.